Hi everyone, I thought I'd uh, share with you a little experiment that I'm going to conduct. Um, as you know, uh, Dan and I are right into 3D printing as well as uh, uh, just purchasing miniatures. Um, we have a FDM printer and we're able to turn out um, lots of buildings and rubble and all kinds of exciting things. Um, this is just a building that I printed recently and uh, yeah, pretty pretty happy with it, uh, generally. Um, but one of the things that we've noticed, let me get that together, one of the things that we've noticed is uh, when you look at that building, uh, the lighting's not particularly great, but when you look at that building side on, um, generally that looks pretty good from, from this sort of position here. Um, but when you are taking photos for a book, as we have recently, and you're getting right down, you're looking at this uh, 28 millimeter miniature here, um, and that miniature is filling the entire frame uh, for, the, for the photograph, you'll actually find that you start to see the striations um, that you don't normally sort of see when you're, when you're looking at it. Um, so, you know, that looks reasonable from the side there. Um, and there's a, a wall that I printed. Um, so in general, from, from that, that sort of uh, distance, it looks, looks pretty reasonable. But when you get down close, and we'll get a close-up camera, you get down close, you'll see, and I have my uh, 3D printer dialed in fairly well, uh, but you'll see the striations there. Now, they don't normally bother us, um, but we have a couple of myth different methods that we use for, uh, for, for getting rid of those. But the problem comes when you get that super, super uh, close-up photography. Now, we also have a resin printer, um, and that's an example of... Uh, something that we've recently printed out on the resin printer and that's uh, uh, just primed up now, ready for a paint job. And if we come into the close-up here, um, yes, there are still striations on resin, but that's a 28 millimeter figure, right? Um, and so that's you know, a, a reasonable sort of a job by the time you get a couple of, couple of coats of primer on it. Um, and that's, uh, that's not too shabby. And generally, um, you wouldn't be too worried about the, uh, about the striations in that. But, um, as an example here, I have uh, two miniatures that I've, that I've, painted, that I've, uh, that I've got. This is a, a Warlord Games one. Um, so this is a hard plastic, straight off the sprue, uh, painted up by me. And then this size comparison, um, this, is, this is a, uh, a printer, a miniature that I printed out on the FDM printer. So this is printed on a end of 3 v2 um, and as you can see it's, it's it's pretty good considering but not good enough to be able to be really used um, you can see there particularly uh, where you see the fish scaling um, so the normal striations um, are sort of uh, bearable uh, but once you get to uh, the areas where it's where it's offset um, you get the fish scaling and yeah that's uh, that's not good to look at. So compare that to um, your beautiful Wall of Games miniature, uh, which is a perfect texture. So miniatures are obviously out for most people um, for, uh, for FDM printing, but the walls, um, what a great way of getting a lot of terrain really fast and really cheap. Um, but one of the things that we found when we were doing the book, as I said, is you get those close-up photos, and here's an example here, so this photo uh, actually looks quite good, um, but if you look at the second photo here, you can see that this one was rejected uh, from the book because um, you can see the striations in particular, um, the way that it was printed, uh, the fish scaling here just, uh, just, just detracts from the whole photo and, and really wasn't up to our standard. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is I'd look into some options in terms of um, a way of finishing the 3D printed surface um, to try and reduce the striations. Now, with a f there are a few different methods of doing it. The classic one is, of course, filling and sanding. Um, but on something like this, where you have a, like a texture, um, you can't realistically fill and sand this um, because you've got all these tiny little, little areas and that's just not possible. Um, there's also um, 
another couple of another couple of uh, techniques. Um, one where uh, it's called vapor smoothing, um, where you put this in a enclosed area with a certain chemical, um, and it, um, it sort of eats away at it ever so slightly and gives you a uh, a better surface, um, a smoother surface. But that's not really available um, for a PLA, which is your standard um, print material that that, that I tend to uh, tend to print in. So, uh, enter this possible solution. So this product here, XTC3D, is a, a product by SmoothOn, uh, SmoothOn an American company, and they produce a whole lot of different products. They also do the mold making material itself, so the silicon rubber um, that you pour, uh, and that's quite a tricky process, but I've done quite a bit of that, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then you pour the resin on top of that. 3D printing in resin maybe has seen now the last of uh, that for, for general usage. If you're doing 100 copies of this, well, yes, a resin, um, a resin cast into a, uh, into a rubber mold is, you know, is ideal because it's fast. Um, you can turn this out in about... 15 minutes, um, whereas uh, on a resin printer, um, you're talking about hours for that. But um, in terms of uh, smoothing, they have this product uh, for 3D for 3D printed FDM stuff. Um, so you can see here um, on the instructions on the back, um, print using your FDM printer. Um, step two, mix and apply with a brush. Um, step three, optional is sanding. And then, uh, and then the final, uh, the final finish um, is achieved with that. So what I'm hoping, because I've done enough sanding in my life uh, when I used to paint, paint cars as a hobby um, and motorbikes, etc. I've done enough sanding to last me a lifetime. I don't ever want to sand anything again. Um, I thought maybe I'd be able to cheat and use this to coat this uh, and reduce the striations enough so that when it's primed you don't see them in the photos when it's finally primed and painted. Now, what I've got is a, I guess a control, is I have a, another one of these, um, it's printed the same way on the same printer, and, uh, and this one here is just painted um, with, uh, with primer. Um, I actually used um, a metal epoxy primer um, just as another little bit of a test, um, I just thought maybe uh, from my experience this is a little bit thicker and it might actually fill the holes on its own. So this is a, a, a look at it um, and we'll see how that goes. I'll give you a close up of that now to compare. So I don't really think the epoxy primer really made much difference. Um, to the uh, to the base material, um, so if we put the two side by side there, and you know, two completely diametrically opposed colours, so that does make it a little bit hard to uh, to see. But uh, you see the striations there, and you see the striations there. If anything, it actually looks more prominent uh, on the black, um, possibly just because of the colour. So priming alone didn't really make a huge difference. And I do have a filler primer, um, which I think perhaps improves it a little bit, um, but really it's not up to the task in terms of that super close photography. For just general gameplay, absolutely fine, but uh, I wanted to see if I could improve it. So let's have a little look and um, we'll step you through on the process and uh, we'll see how things go.
All right, we're back. So it's had a chance to dry now. Um, that's fully dry. It's not tacky at all. It does seem a little bit smooth because it's a, it's a gloss color kind of coat. Um, and you can see there, if I get it in the right light, it actually does seem pretty good. You can see a lot of striations on the sides there. Let's go to the close up view. see there that that's looking pretty good compared to the original the striation is showing and then the, uh, the coated version now one thing that didn't really improve hugely was the fish scaling um, so you see there on the top where the printer is sort of forced to um, to to go horizontally while it's also uh, you know vertically building up the layers and you see that fish scaling in there which you know is uh, is, is what really i object to um, now on the coated version the coated version it certainly is improved but it's not perfect. Now, how much of that is actually transparent coating and how much of it is actually um, still there just literally as a texture? I don't know. Um, that will remain to be seen until we paint it. So, you can still see the striations there in some points, but certainly it's a big improvement over the original. And again, I can't stress enough that for the average wargamer um, that's just putting this out the table at the at arm's length, this is probably going to be fine. Um, bearing in mind that my 3D printer is pretty well dialed in. Um, you see that compared to my fingernail. They're pretty small striations, right? Um, but, uh, yep, I think that's a big improvement on what it was. Now, before I go ahead and, uh, and paint this, um, I couldn't, uh, couldn't wait any longer. I do have one which I've gone ahead and painted. So this is it here. Um, same thing, printed on the same printer. Um, same scale, same size, same everything else. Um, now, one side of this is coated. And one side is not. Let me get it on the close cam. And I think you'll be able to pretty easily see, in terms of fish scaling, which side is painted and which is not for that rubble. You see there's quite a bit of fish scaling there as it goes up. And see this other side is a lot better. Now you could argue that um, all you're really doing is losing the detail. Yes, that's a fair comment, um, but I guess that's what we're actually trying to achieve. Now what I've done with this one is I've painted one side directly over the top of the 3D print. So you can still see the striations there, they're perhaps a little bit obscured by the primer. And then the other side is a direct comparison on the same piece, you can see there that all the striations have been covered. Arguably, there's just less detail. Um, if you want to put it in a negative light, uh, if you want to put it in a positive light, um, it's uh, completely removed the striations. Now, again, the fish scale at the top, I actually think that that is enough to be sort of a believable thing and to stand up under close-up photography. This other end, Not so much. It's obviously 3D printed. Obviously you can see the striations in there um, where things uh, stop and start. Uh, whereas on this side, certain areas are better than others. I guess it's probably about my coating ability in terms of, uh, in terms of being regular. Other parts of it are, uh, are just sort of uneven like a stone would be. Um, now I did this one pretty quickly. Um, so this isn't necessarily the, 
the be all and end all. Um, but what I will do is I'm going to paint this one up in detail um, and uh, and give it give it a good coating of primer, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Uh, one other small thing to uh, to mention is that I used um, super expensive uh, Citadel Chaos Black on one side of this, um, and I used Rust-Oleum 2X, which I know is pretty popular. I know a lot of people use this for uh, for miniatures as well on the other side. And an interesting phenomenon, one side here is smooth, very smooth. The other side is slightly textured. So that's not a texture that's coming from the uh, from the 3D print because we know there were striations there. Um, but one side is, uh, is is smooth, and one side is textured from the actual paint. Now you're going to ask me which side is which, aren't you? I don't actually remember. I just painted both sides, and I painted one with one and one with the other, and uh, didn't make a mark on it to know. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll, I'll re-research that again, and uh, come back and let you know. Because certainly that to me, if I can get right in there, is a nice rocky texture um, which would stand up very well in close-up photos uh, whereas this side kind of looks like it's just been painted too much so we'll try that on this big one here and we'll see the results after that All right, here it is, the final product. So, uh, painted up, um, not particularly uh, fancy painting, but uh, and and I would normally put a little bit of uh, flock of greenery around these areas here. But just to show you how it'll look when it's painted, uh, in this case, in a brown tone. Uh, so, yeah, I think it looks quite nice and uh, complete with our 28 millimeter Warlord Games Mini. Um, it looks uh, quite respectable. Uh, let's go to the close cam, have a little bit of a look there. Okay, close cam view. And if you look there, pretty sure there's a minimal texture along that wall. The ends look good, and anywhere that you can see where there is a little bit of texture, uh, it's probably where I've just missed putting the product. Uh, the top, see a few striations there where, where it's got the uh, fish scaling, but uh, I wonder if a, a second application wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have sorted that out. But in terms of uh, what you can see, um, uh, I think that's a pretty good job. So, end result, I'm very happy with that as a product. Uh, smooth on XTC 3D, definitely from my perspective, it works, it works well. And uh, although fairly expensive to purchase, um, I think it'll go quite a long way. And uh, I'm going to experiment next with having that on some buildings. Uh, so, thanks very much for sticking with us, guys. And uh, if you had any doubts as to whether uh, you would be happy to use this product or not, uh, tell me the truth. Would you rather see this? Or would you rather see this in your next Valhalla Games campaign book? Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.